Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, TGIF. Um, I am filming live from DeSmet, South Dakota. And I uh, wanted to get in our book of John. What is going on here? There we go. Woo! Thought I lost you here. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I had a nice visit with my my aunt yesterday just for a little bit and now we are moving on to the next town of our family in south dakota so god bless you today and let's get rolling with our morning affirmations i am important today is going to be a great day the world needs me today i choose happiness i believe in myself today is a fresh and new start Today I will do my best, and today and every day, God loves me, and I am his child. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So, I haven't got my tablet, so these are what I'm using for our prayers and, and acts of kindness. You know how that goes when you're away from home. Um, so, for prayers, um, um, we have Maureen Setness. So I was just notified yesterday from Maureen's daughter um, that she's in a Grand Forks hospital, has a bunch of stuff going on. So please keep Maureen and, and her family in your prayers. Ryan Newville from, um, grew up with him my whole life back in Spicer, um, broke his neck yesterday in a freak accident. And so he's having surgery in St. Cloud. So please keep Ryan and Gail in your prayers. And then, of course, we have continued prayers for Margaret. So that's all I have for the prayers. But again, as I always say, God knows who's in our minds and hearts, and he knows everybody who's out there that needs prayers. So most of my acts of kindness today are from Darren and I. So first of all, um, we um, had breakfast at Perkins, and the lady took a little bit extra longer on her bill because she kept messing up or whatever. Um, but with that, she gave us some free cookies with that. So I thought that was pretty nice. Um, and then Marie says, um, asked what I did for a living. And she goes, are you an educator or in um, health care or whatever? And I said, no. I said, I'm a minister. And she goes, well, you know what? Ministers are a type of educator, too. And so she gave me 10% off. Plus, I used my birthday coupon. So, um, great day at Marisa's. Um, and then when we checked into the hotel last night, um, uh, they didn't register Colby um, as they were supposed to because, you know, dogs get, you know, like 10 bucks extra a night or something. And she just said um, that since they didn't do that in the beginning, that they wouldn't charge me for him. And I said, well, he's a good, good, good boy, and he won't be any problem. So um, I just had lots of acts of kindness going on yesterday. Um, Patty, big thank you out to Patty from Nakoma for dog and cat sitting. And our puppies just love her so much. So it's a nice break away from the dogs and for both of us, I think. And um, Peggy, um, our friend here on Coffee with Christ, donated a whole bunch of awesome beautiful clothes and um so some of our confirmation girls went through it and then i actually brought them um down to my aunt and she went through them and um then the rest of them are gonna go to a thrift store in um let's see is it uh what town is that in huron south dakota it's a friend of my aunt's that will take them. So thank you so very much, Peggy. Um, and I can't remember, but thanks for the birthday gift as well. And then Donna went out of her way. Um, Donna lives um, south of Brockett. Um, but she went out of her way to deliver an angel food cake to a lady that is in an assisted living down there. Because she specifically needed an angel food cake to make angel food cupcakes for the people in the assisted living to celebrate her deceased husband's birthday. Um, so we have some good people in the world. God bless all of you guys. 
So with that, uh, let, let us all join on in prayer here. Dear Lord, we thank you for your abundant, abounding grace. Thank you that we don't have to earn a drop of the mighty river of grace that flows freely for us today. Thank you for the unexpected, unmerited favor you've showered on our lives. Help us put ourselves in the path of your love and grace. Help us not neglect the, dis um, the disciplines we need to meet with you regularly and to drink from the water of life. Thank you for your rich love. Amen. Each and every day. Each and every day. So, um, as you guys probably noticed, um, I was trying to set up Coffee with Christ for 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. But, you know, me with my technology favor didn't end up that way. So I ended up doing it Tuesday night. So if you guys missed it, it is on the Facebook pages. Um, so you can go back and watch the book of Luke. But today we are in the Gospel of John. And we have to say the Gospel of John. But because we have uh, we have the Bible books, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John later on. Um, and John is entitled, The Word Became Flesh. And so, let's go through, I'm not going to go through the outline on this one either. John is a long book. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, 183 we are on, you guys. Um, <clears throat> the outline is very, very long, but the themes are, let's see what we have here. The themes, the persons of the Trinity. John shows the relationship of Jesus to the Father through the Spirit. Um, the gospel focuses on Jesus's connection to the Father. It is this relationship in the power and love of the Holy Spirit that is at the center and foundation of everything else from creation to salvation. Next, contrasting realities. Unlike the other Gospels that focus on the contrast between the present and the future, the Gospel of John focuses on two realities, the heavenly and the worldly realities. John makes this contrast using several important images. Um, love. Love is a central theme in the writings of John, the Gospel, and the letters of John. The identity of Jesus. Jesus' teaching about himself reveal that he is God's son. He came to the world for two main reasons. To reveal the Father and to die for the world. In the book of John, Jesus teaches the famous seven I am's, which we'll go over, to illustrate with powerful images who he is. All the images come from the Old Testament. In them, Jesus identifies with God because he is God. The Holy Spirit. Although the other Gospels also teach about the Holy Spirit, the emphasis in the Gospel of John is unique. The Holy Spirit is sent as a result of Jesus' death and resurrection. The Holy Spirit's ministry anticipates the full coming of the kingdom. And last is Jesus and miracles. Jesus' miracles are signs of his identity as the incarnate son of God. So yeah, John is a great book. One of my favorites, one of my favorites. So here we go. The Gospel of John makes its purpose clear. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And that comes from John 20, verse 31. You see, the Gospel of John, John seems to have two main purposes, and we talked about them, but for teaching, in that it presents Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God in the flesh, and helps believers to continue exercising their faith in Christ. And also for evangelism, in that it leads people to have faith in Jesus, the Messiah. In addition, the Gospel of John also seems to argue against the view that the material world is evil and worthless. Huh? Well, by showing Jesus, the Word, became flesh, the Gospel of John shows that the material Word, although sinful and dominated by the powers of evil, is worth redeeming and is valuable to God. Have you ever thought of it that way? Pretty cool. 
<coughs> excuse me. According to a well-known tradition of the church, John the Apostle wrote this book. The view is based on the witness of Irenaeus and other second century church leaders. Now, Irenaeus had a close contact with at least two disciples of John. And so he affirmed that John wrote the, his gospel after all the others had written theirs. Now, other scholars have suggested that there was another John, John the Elder, who may have been responsible for the gospel. But the gospel itself refers to the disciple whom Jesus loved, who probably is John, the author of this book. It is likely that John also wrote the letters of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and the book of Revelations. See, um, our gospel for this month has been John, so we've done, been doing a lot of studying on this. So um, it, really, it really helps to be repetitive with that. Now, some scholars have suggested this gospel was written first because it is so very different and independent of the other three, but most consider the work later than the other three. And so with that assumption, it was most likely written in AD 85 to AD 95. Tradition holds that John wrote the gospel while living in Ephesus. Ephesus was a cosmopolitan port city of great importance. It already had a Jewish presence, including followers of John the Baptist, early in the days of Paul's missionary work. Now, the Apostle John's care in describing Jesus' ministry and the ministry of John the Baptist may reflect the Apostle's concern on his Jewish audience. So here we go. We're going to go through the seven I am's. One, I am the bread of life, John 6, verse 35. I am the light of the world, John 8, verse 12 through 9, verse 5. I am the door, John 10, 7, and 9. I am the good shepherd, John 10, verse 11. I am the resurrection and the life. John 11, verse 25. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse 6. And I am the true vine. John 15, verse 1. He is it, everything. So the Gospel of John reveals God's wonderful promise of a new birth into an abundant life. God challenged his people to take hold of that promise offered in his son Jesus. As Jesus prepared his disciples to continue his ministry, he promised to send the very same spirit that empowered him to be their teacher, counselor, and comforter. Now, John had a unique relationship with Jesus. He was one of the three disciples who were part of Christ's inner circle. Together with Peter and James, so it was Peter, James, and John, John witnessed the raising of Jairus' daughter and the transfiguration. He was also present in the Garden of Gethsemane during Jesus' agonizing, prayer-filled night before the crucifixion. In John's Gospel, he refers to himself as the disciple Jesus loved a handful of times. It's evident that there was a unique friendship between Jesus and John. Now, here are a couple lessons that we can take from John and, the, and his gospel. The first one is Christian leadership is about being a good shepherd. This, to me, is such a big problem nowadays, you guys, in so many places, from small to big. So throughout his gospel, John weaves a consistent concept about shepherding. You can't read his account of Christ's story without recognizing that the metaphor had a significant impact on the way John saw Jesus and the way he thought about leadership. In John 10 verses 1 through 18, the apostle records one of Christ's monologues about being the good shepherd. In this monologue, Jesus likens himself to a gate through which his sheep enter the pasture and a good shepherd who lays down his life for those sheep. Later, Jesus returns to this metaphor when the Jews begin pressing him to admit that he's the Messiah. Jesus responds, I did tell you, but you do not, do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, 
but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. That comes from John 10, 25 through 28, which is our gospel for this weekend. After his resurrection, Jesus revisits this analogy again, only this time he's using it as a commission. After his arrest, Peter had denied having known him, as Jesus predicted that he would do. And Jesus returns to the shepherd image to reinstate this heartbroken disciple. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, John, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. That's in John 21, 15 through 17. Now, in this way, John's brilliant uh, brilliancy weaves this shepherding concept into his gospel's final and most tender moment. It's as if he's reminding us that Jesus is the good shepherd. Those who wish to follow him will need to be good shepherds too. And this means that Christian leadership, here's a big part here. This means that Christian leadership is not about position and power. It's about guiding and caring for Christ's flock. And if need be, laying down your life for them. Second, discipleship touches every area in our lives. Now, what do you, th what is, what do you think it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus? <clears throat> it's easy to compart compartmentalize following Jesus, like dividing our time between our worldly and sacred pursuits. The truth is, is that there isn't an aspect of our lives that's untouched by being a disciple. Christ's call impacts every area of our lives. The disciples gave up everything to follow Jesus. They walked away from professions and family relationships for him. But there's a moment at the crucifixion that gives us a glimpse of what discipleship truly looks like. John 19 verses 25 through 27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, pointing to John. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. So from the cross, Jesus charges John with the care of his mother. There wasn't a discussion or a negotiation. We see discipleship infringing upon John's home life. Part of John's service to the Lord was loving and caring for Jesus' mother. And John says that from that moment on, he cared for Mary. We don't get to set boundaries around what it means to follow Jesus. It's an all or nothing proposition. When we invite Jesus into our world, it's comprehensive. And our devotion to Jesus impacts every aspect of our life. Three, Jesus is more than we can begin to comprehend. And we've already pointed that out. John and Jesus had a special relationship, right? John often identified himself as a disciple Jesus loved. It's apparent that John felt a closeness with the Lord. In the three and a half years that John spent with Jesus, he witnessed the most amazing feats. Not only did he see miracle after miracle, but he also was party to the transfiguration where Jesus became radiant in glory and spoke with Elijah and Moses. And to top it all off, he was a witness that Christ was a resurrection. But his exposure 
to these mind-blowing experiences and his close relationship to the Lord did not prepare him for the truth. He knew Jesus, but he didn't really know Jesus. John wrote the book of Revelation based on visions that he had while exiled on the island of Patmos. The beginning of this vision reads like this. <clears throat> I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in the furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. That comes from Revelation 1, verses 12 through 18. So why do you think Jesus, why would have he told John not to be afraid? Because despite all that he knew about the Lord, he was just not prepared to see him as he truly, truly was. The moment he exposed to the glorified heavenly Jesus, his legs gave out. And he falls on his face as if he was dead. Knowing that John had such a close relationship with the Lord and was still caught off guard by seeing the glorified Christ should give us pause. The reality of Jesus is so much more than we could ever hope to imagine. John's gospel clearly identifies Jesus as God, but he still couldn't fathom what that meant. We cannot overemphasize or belabor Christ's power and majesty. We only understand a fraction of what it means to worship Jesus as Lord. As Paul says so profoundly, for now we see on a, only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Huh, interesting. <clears throat> the wonderful thing about following Jesus is that there is always more to learn. Like John, we can be close to Jesus and still discover facets of his person and character that we never knew existed. Walking with Jesus promises us a lifetime of new breakthroughs and revelations. And there is no better way to live. Amen. John's a good one, guys. That's a good one. So with that, let us all say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon each and every one of you and this whole entire world with his favor and give us all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is a gift from God. That is why they call today the present. So make the most of this beautiful day, my friends, because this is a day that the Lord has made, and let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Um, we have gotten through the Gospels. So next week... For Wednesday and Friday, we are going to be in, oh, we got Acts left. We got Acts left, definitely. Um, 
and then we'll be done with the gospel next and we'll move into the epistles and revelation um and so we'll move into paul's epistles um so next week we'll be doing acts and romans acts and romans all right everybody have a great and amazing weekend and until wednesday god bless you and bye for now